Okay. This is Senate Judiciary Thursday, September 24th, 2020. Um, again, meeting remotely. Um, today is S24, a courthouse name for Judge Francis McCaffrey, whom we've all had a great deal of respect for. But evidently, the courthouse was named in a prior bill, and so S24 became a vehicle for a corrections racial equity uh, bill. And uh, we're looking at that as the committee with the responsibility for uh, corrections policy. I want to uh, start out, though, this morning by thanking Peggy Delaney, uh, particularly from the Legislative Council staff, our committee assistant, who is in charge of all the committee assistants and has done just a terrific job of organizing throughout this pandemic. We started in mid-March, uh, meeting remotely, and I, it would not have been possible to uh, even begin to think about meeting without her and other members of that team, particularly Mike Ferrant. So a special thanks, Peggy, to you and to Mike Ferrant and all the members of your team for all the help in getting us through this. Um, really do appreciate it. And uh, I hope you have a good rest of the fall mm -hmm. and that uh, you'll be back and raring to go, hopefully, uh, hopefully in person in January, but time will tell. Thank you, so. Mr. Sears. And it's, again, I'll say it again, it's my honor and privilege. Thank you. We're going to start out, uh, Jim Baker has an appointment at 1030, so. Senator Sears? Out. Yes. I don't know if it's my computer or not, but you are very, very scratchy. Well, unfortunately, I'm outside, and that might be why. Okay. So I'm going to try to turn off my, I will turn off my audio and, and it's, just turn it, it over to Jim Baker. It's fine now, Dick, for some yeah. reason. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. Maybe it's this uh, thing here. I think, yeah. I think that's it what is. it is, actually. How's that? That's good. Great. All right. Um, why don't we start with... Um, Jim Baker, who has an appointment at 1030. And uh, <clears throat> then we'll kind of um, move along to uh, others. Yeah, good, good morning, folks. Uh, thank you, Senator Sears. For the record, I'm Jim Baker, the interim commissioner of the Vermont Department of Corrections. Um, and I'm, I'm here to talk about the uh, Department of Corrections racial equity and bias plan and report. Um, <clears throat> first, I want to say that we fully support the work that was done in house corrections and institutions. In fact, I'm, I'm sure Representative Evans and Shaw will tell you <clears throat> that we work very closely with them on this language. Um, from where I sit, um, I talked to this committee and other committees uh, in the legislature about um, where I see us as an organization and the work that we need to do. And equity is a huge part of that. And for me, it's just not equity about um, our inmate population or those we supervise in the community. It's also equity for our employees and with a heavy emphasis on um, the way we hire, train, promote, and create the environment amongst the workforce um, that we think is the most effective way for us to carry out our mission. So I, I really don't have a whole bunch to add to we support this language. Um, we were part of creating the language um, and we see an opportunity here for us to generate a document that will be a blueprint for us that fits into the bigger conversation about equity in the state, but really hones in on areas where we can do work that create a more equitable, fair, and impartial system <laughs> of corrections in the state of Vermont. So that's what I have to say about, about the uh, language in the legislation. Okay. Um. Any Senator, uh, Senator White. So Commissioner Baker, I um, applaud your efforts for going forward with this, but I guess my question is why would you think you need legislation in order to do this? Because we have an office of racial equity and executive director Susanna Davis has been charged with looking at systemic um, racism throughout the throughout the state. And so I'm curious why you think you need legislation to do this. 
Um, because I think it makes a bold statement to um, the Department of Corrections about uh, the importance of this. I can say it, um, but on, on commissioners, and maybe even in my case, even more, commissioners are only here for a short period of time, Senator. We're talking about a radical cultural change inside corrections. Um, this is just one small piece of that. And I think um, I'm normally not a big supporter of legislative reports, as some of you may know from my history of being around the legislature. But I think in this case, it forces corrections to take a serious internal look at its operation and create a document that goes, it's, it's not something we're competing with Director Davis. It goes hand in hand with the work that she's doing. But it's, it's uh, very specific to corrections and, and forces us to take a serious look internally. Um, now I'm serious about it, but I've got 1,100 employees and some of them may not be serious about it. So this to me is a bold statement about, <clears throat> we're taking a look at this directed from oversight committees from the legislature. And um, that's, that's the reason why when uh, Representative Emmons spoke to me about this, that I was supportive of it. Um, Senator Benning. So Commissioner, I, I want to um, first, I'm still scratching my head as to how you're an interim and still here. <laughs> More power to you. Um, but not only as a member of this committee, but as a member of institutions, I know you've been placed under a tremendous amount of pressure from the get-go. And we may not have the opportunity to express publicly our appreciation after today. Um, your words are reminding me of a bill that we worked on yesterday. And I, I hope that there is a an attitude amongst law enforcement that will eventually come around to the position you've just expressed. I want to uh, say personally, I think you've done a heck of a great job with the corrections department in the time that you've had to work with. And uh, hopefully whoever your replacement ends up being, should you ever decide to not become an interim anymore. <laughs> um, there's a job opening apparently after your internship is over. But um, I do want to say I appreciate the work you've done throughout the past few months. It's been one heck of a ride. And to watch you do that has been very interesting and informative. So thanks. Sir, I, I, I appreciate those kind of words. Um, I, what I will tell you is, is that um, there are a lot of folks in, inside corrections that were waiting for an opportunity um, to, to let the reins get down, be taken down and let them do their work. And that's what's happening right now. And this, this equity piece is an example of this. People um, inside corrections were waiting for the opportunity to be able to have this conversation. And uh, I'm just allowing them to have the conversation. That's my role. Um, what I will tell you the same thing I told us, I, I do a statewide um, teleconference every Wednesday afternoon. Anybody in the department can get on. It's an open question um, directed at me. I usually give them uh, a little bit of a, uh, an overview of what's going on in the department every week. Uh, yesterday, we spent time talking about Justice Ginsburg and the impact of leadership and how that can impact corrections. I only tell you that because it ties directly into equity um, and, and the legacy that uh, uh, Justice Ginsburg left behind around gender. And so I appreciate those kind words, but this is what I told the staff yesterday. I've told Secretary Smith that I'm here um, as long as he needs me and um, as long as my health holds up. I think uh, every member of this committee would echo Senator Benning's remarks of our yes. appreciation for the job you've done in probably the most difficult, challenging times in a hundred years. Um, Absolutely. Going through and dealing with the pandemic and what we've seen nationally in prisons particularly, um, and um, the results in Vermont prisons of the COVID. Unfortunately, we saw the national trend in, in our, with our offenders that are housed in Mississippi. <clears throat> but I, I also want to thank you, Jim, for all the work you've done and, and the professionalism that with which you approach this job. And I will tell you that you've been there longer than many commissioners who were hired in the past. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I don't you know, you know, Senator. I don't know if that's good or bad. Or I'm just, uh, I'm just. Uh, I don't know either. Foolish, I foolish enough. I remember to... when 
when I first started, and you remember, may remember this commissioner, I think it was when you first started in, in the state police, he immediately announced to Dick Snelling that he needed a helicopter to visit all the correctional facilities. I think he got fired within a week of his, <laughs> of his time. On well, the I, I, I haven't asked for a helicopter center, so I guess I'm okay. <laughs> I think Listen, I appreciate all your kind words. Um, yeah. You know, I just think public service is important, and that's why I do what I do. And I, I, I appreciate these kind words. Have but, you had an uh, opportunity? Senator Ash's uh, proposed uh, amendment to the bill. Um, it's posted on our website, and it it um, talks about uh, working with the Commissioner of Corrections, working with the Executive Director of Racial Equity, Equity, on a strategy and long-term plan to, to address uh, systematic racism, bias, diversity, and inclusion in the Department of Corrections. Yes. Um, rather than having the department doing it, um, as I think, and I don't know if that was the intent we'll get from Representative Evans and Representative Shar in a moment, but uh, Senator Ash went and redrafted the House version. So I don't know if you have any comments on Senator Ash's version. Um, I really don't. I think if I read it right, and what I'm hearing you say is Senator Ash's intent was to make sure that we were working in concert with Director Davis, and um, yep. we are, and, and I think she would. She, I know she's on. Um, I, I've had a couple conversations with her. I know other staff members talk to her, um, and, and our, our work. I, I see aligning with the work that um, she is tasked with doing, and she's doing. So I, I don't. What I would not want is for us to get away from following the intent and the plan that's in the language that House Corrections Institution put forward, because I'll say the same thing again that, that I said in, in response to Senator White's question. A, um, a bold statement helps me in a leadership role to carry on this work inside corrections. And um, we, are, we are now really starting to get into the data collection to understand who we have in our system and how, I mean, we're nowhere near where we need to be. But, you know, I, I, I'll give an example of this. The data showed in the month of July that um, two of the 13 individuals who are transgendered in our system were put in segregation. And um, without that kind of data, you don't see that. And so when you have 13 individuals in a protected class and two of them end up in segregation, um, I, I have a saying that's enough to put your coffee cup down and ask why. So what, what, I'm, what, what I'm saying is I would not want us to move away from us focusing directly on corrections, but working in concert with, with Director Davis. Senator Sears? Senator yes. White, yes, Senator White. So my, the reason I asked that question, Commissioner, is because um, we have, the legislation has permanently charged the um, executive director of the of racial equity to um, and that office to look at systemic racism across state government. And um, the, behind that is the force of the governor and all of the governor's staff, which means all the commissioners and all the secretaries. So it is a statement in itself saying this is really important and the legislature has said it's important and the governor has said it's important. And what I fear is that every, if we, if we go down this path, every agency or every office or every division or every department will come to the legislature and say, we need legislation in order to look at this in our agency because our agency is somehow special. So uh, what, I don't know how many agencies, departments, and offices and divisions we have, but I would hate to see us try to write legislation around each of those to try to put the, the force of legislation behind it when I think we already have done that through the through creating the office and the panel and by and the governor by um, implementing that office and hiring Ms. Davis. So that, that's my fear is that I, I think that we, we could go down this path next year with um, 
every other agency and every other department and every division and every office. So that's my fear. I, I, I appreciate that. And I hear what you're saying, Senator. <clears throat> you know, I guess my only, um, my only comment on it is, is that, you know, I guess every commissioner thinks their agency is special. I don't think that way, but I do know that we have a very direct impact on the lives of individuals and their ability um, to live um, lives that, um, you know, I mean, we have the ability, and, and I just gave the example, um, we have the ability to interrupt people's lives in a way that a lot of other agencies don't. And so all I'm trying to do, and part of my conversation was with Representative Emmons and Representative Shaw, and then with their committee, was to make sure that people know that Corrections has taken this seriously. Um, we were working on it anyway, but this just gives help some clarity and guidance to us on what what we need to do to report back to the legislature. So I appreciate you coming. It's not going to be a pushback. Uh, yeah, I uh, I want to just um, suggest that uh, I do agree um, that it's helpful to have this in statute. So there's a slight disagreement with Senator White. The reason being, this is the, if not the largest group of state employees, next to largest group of state employees work for the Department of Corrections. And we also have uh, a lot of contractors and volunteers who work for, for with the Department of Corrections. So I, I see this as somewhat different, but I thought what was lacking in the bill that came over, and I agree with Senator Rash, that we need to involve the director of racial equity into this uh, process. And so I, you know, I, I, but I do think, um, I do applaud the house and Jim, I don't know who went first, but um, for raising this issue and putting it onto um, the McCaffrey building bill. Um, so I'm a little, little bit at odds here on this one, but I do see corrections as somewhat of a unique uh, office of state government in that they have so many employees and they have up to 6,000 people under their supervision who have to do what they're, we hope they do what they're told to do and what they're being told to do is done without prejudice. Um, and I, so I, I think I find that unique to perhaps um, the agency and natural resources, which also could use help in making sure that they respond in a diverse way. But yeah. when you think about the number of people under corrections control and the number of employees in the department. Um, I hate to disagree with my good friend from Wyndham from the other side of the mountain. But, uh, I think we've I, had many disagreements in the past and probably I will think continue have, to, but. but I, and I just, I just do want to acknowledge that Corrections is in a slightly different situation, but there are other agencies in the state that also have a huge impact on people's lives. All of the, um, the Department of Mental Health, the Department of Health, um, DIVA, anybody that deals with any economic services issues, if, the, if we see systemic racism in those um, areas, it does have a huge impact on the lives of the people that they serve. So while corrections does have people, a lot of people that are in their control, the other agencies also have make a huge impact on people's lives. But I'm, I'm not gonna, if we want this in legislation, and I, I hope that this is in session law, not in the green books. Mm -hmm. I believe it's session, but Becky Wasserman can help us with that. Um, it's session law. Are yeah. there any? Are there any other questions for Commissioner Baker before he has to leave us? And I believe Heather Simmons is here and will be available. Um, she, she, she is going to, she is here, Senator, and she'll be able to follow up. And um, Heather does have the point inside corrections on the discussion and the work around equity. Thank you. All right. So, um, I believe my agenda is on my iPad and I just, my iPad just shut itself down for good reason, probably. It didn't want to be up anymore.
Um, oh gosh. <laughs> Back to the agenda. I'm sorry, folks. Um, Rebecca Wasserman was scheduled next, but I think maybe given the conversation, I'm going to jump to Representative Emmons and if she wants Representative Shaw, the vice chair of the House Committee on Corrections and Institutions. Great. Uh, thank you, Senator. For the record, my name is Representative Alice Hemmons, Chair of the House Corrections and Institutions. And I have with me, <clears throat> as you stated, the Vice Chair, Representative Shaw. Um, and so I think together we can sort of give you our thoughts and maybe quickly walk you through the language. We, starting last January, which was a long time ago, we spent quite a bit of time with DOC, particularly with Heather Simons, as well as with Commissioner Baker, as a result of what was reported in the Chittenden Correctional Facility and the issues there. And it really came to light that there's some real culture issues within DOC that need to be addressed and the current commissioners is doing the work to do that. When we started talking over the summer on the whole rec uh, racial equity and social equity issue, um, a lot of folks do not look at Department of Corrections. Department of Corrections, people don't focus on it. The public doesn't really focus on it until a big issue comes up and then everybody's saying, why did they do this? So the, thing, and the, the concern was that at any point in time, we have anywhere from eight to 10,000 Vermonters under the custody of the Department of Corrections. And of those, it ranges anywhere from 1,600 to 1,800 folks who are physically incarcerated and their movement, movements are limited. We also have folks out in the community who are supervised by our field service offices. And in testimony, we, we really wanna make sure that, that we really work with the commissioner in changing the culture. Uh, within DOC, the culture of employee to employee relationships, employee to offender relationships, offender to offender, and offender to staff. And this is what the language attempts to address. Um, it doesn't point fingers at anyone. And we start out with the findings section to be really clear what is in current statute is that the Department of Corrections is not a law enforcement entity. It is structurally within the Agency of Human Services for a reason. Other states, the Department of Corrections is within their Department of Public Safety. And we in Vermont years ago made the decision that DOC should be within the Agency of Human Services because it's part of people's lives. So the first part of the finding is that, and we cited the statute 28 VSA section one, which is for the rehabilitative correctional programming. And we stated as well, that it's to render treatment to offenders with the goal of achieving their successful return and participation as citizens to the state and to foster their human dignity. The second finding to me, and I think to our committee was really important because Director Simons actually said this. And we thought it was really important to put these words down um, in our findings. The DOC does not serve as a law enforcement. That's what we put in. But she said, but does play an important role in implementing the quality of an individual sentence and ability for the successful return to and participation in the community. That is DOC's role. And we felt that was very important to highlight those words. And as part of that, we feel that part of their role is to provide security and ensure racial and social justice to the employees and to the folks who are under the custody. And then the intent is that we would start addressing the systemic racism and bias to achieve racial and social equity with the employees as well as with the offenders. And we're talking folks who are incarcerated and folks who are out in the field under supervision of our field service offices. And we're also looking at trying to look at the recruiting and training and retention of a diverse and highly 
quality workforce. And the commissioner is really working now to start working in the training and, and recruitment of correctional officers and staff. And we wanna give support to that. And then we've asked for a plan to come back and we've laid out what some of the scope of that plan is, that it would address some of the department's employment practices and supervision of the folks under their custody, and that they need to include a timeline and a process for that. And they need to evaluate the hiring practices, the training, the supervision and competency standards to inform the performance evaluations and promotions of employees and identify the resources and funding that would be needed. And also to identify a list of stakeholders because we wanna make sure this is inclusive. This is inclusive of the stakeholders. And we had testimony from Director Davis. Uh, we reached out to Tabitha Moore. We had VSCA in. We had Director Simons in. Um, we've been reaching out and we would have done more if we'd had the time, but we wanna make sure that the stakeholders are at the table. And then we're asking for a report back to our committee and your committee by the 15th of January, because we need to do a lot more work on this. So this plan would be a work in progress so that we continue doing deeper work in it next session. So that's our goal. That's what the language uh, before you does. And I don't know if Representative Shaw <clears throat> would like to speak in. He was the reporter of the bill. So. Representative Shaw, if you'd like to. Uh, thank you, Senator, and uh, members of the committee for having us in today. Uh, I, th I think uh, Chair Emmons did a marvelous job of. Uh, of reporting out what, what is in the bill. Uh, I'd like to give you my personal observation just a little bit, uh, why I, I got excited about this bill. Uh, S338 was the, the start of uh, a really good um, move into uh, doing better within our corrections uh, department in our corrections population. As we talked along S338, you know, we set up a series of reports in that bill to report back to the General Assembly However, after S338 went out and listening, and I got really interested in uh, Commissioner Baker's uh, uh, interest in doing a better job of hiring and training uh, the people within the Department of Corrections. And then he set up the Office of Professional Standards within DOC. And as we know, Heather, is, Heather Simons is now the director of that. And uh, to back up uh, the chair's testimony, we've had Heather in a lot, but when she came in after she was appointed the uh, director of the uh, professional standards office, she really began to talk to us about the people, recruiting, training, and retention of folks uh, within corrections. And that is, a, that is a big deal. We all know that corrections is, is short employees. So training the right people to be members of their team is important. And that all involves into uh, why we're why I'm here today is to talk about why we need this bill. Uh, we heard from uh, from Heather about employee not only employee versus inmate uh, incidences with uh, not being racially e uh, equitable and and so forth. We also heard about employee versus employee, and we don't think about that very much uh, in, uh, uh, in in our world. We think everybody's okay. And we also heard about prisoner versus prisoner and prisoner versus employee. So it's, it's a systemic issue throughout corrections. And again, to, to back up Chair Emmons, these folks that are incarcerated are certainly invulnerable because they're locked up. And so it's a little different animal than being on the street. However, we've also heard reports of the latest down in the Brattleboro area of a, of a, a DOC employee taking advantage of a person under uh, his control uh, when they were under supervision and not locked up. So this is a serious issue for me, uh, for me personally and for the committee that we really take a uh, kind of a dive into what's going on. And, and it's important uh, to understand that we may not have scooped in corrections in some of the work that we've done uh, uh, in other bills uh, throughout this session 
because they are not law enforcement. They're not classified as law enforcement. They're employees of the state Department of Human Services. So that, that is a little different. And uh, the language, Beck can certainly go over the language with you, but I, I think what this bill does is kicks off a concrete plan for corrections to take a, a deep look at themselves uh, with the help of uh, Susanna Davis and her team uh, in the administration and with the help of DOC working in concert with them to get back to us and tell us how they can do better or how they think they can do better uh, or if they can help us understand how we can help them do better. And there is a section in the report that asks them to tell us, what do you need for resources? We don't wanna just pile more on the DOC and let them try to do this work within their existing resources. And it's important for us to help them do this. So I guess that's my, that's my, uh, excuse me. Okay, that's, that, that's my spiel and I thank you for listening. Thank you, Butch. Uh, Senator White. So I seem to be, um, it, it's a good thing the end of the session is coming up because I seem to be a little testy lately as my committee members will tell you, but um, I appreciate the, what you both said and what I, when I read this and when I listen to it, most of it is um, aimed at the, the people in the system the staff, the um, prisoners, the, the relationships between them and how we do that. I, I would hope that, and I'm sure Susanna will do this, but I would hope that we are not just looking at the, um, the people and how we respond and how we train them because systemic racism comes from systems that are put in place that impact people and surely there are, and I have to admit that I don't have any idea what those systems are that might be impacting, but they might be systems of how we um, uh, allow um, worship services, or they might be systems of in the field, how we, um, I, I, I don't know what those systems are, but what I'm saying is that this bill seems to be focused mainly on the personnel and on the interrelationships between people who are part of the system in any way. And I would, I am, uh, I know Susanna's on the call with us here. And so I'm um, appealing to her to go in this um, study and in this work go way beyond just those personnel, but look at the, the potential systems that cause discrimination here, both around um, racial injustice and socioeconomic injustice and what our systems are and, and come up with some solutions to that. So thank you. Can I respond yeah. to that in terms of the language? You just give me... 20 seconds to mm -hmm. Peggy. Uh, um, would you send Senator Ash a Zoom link to this meeting? Thank you. Go ahead, Alice. So I really appreciate what Senator <laughs> says. And we talked about that in the committee, and we talked about that with, with the folks who were testifying, and particularly with DOC. <laughs> DOC, their systems are in their directives and their policies. And, and we address this in the plan that they would develop a strategy and a long-term plan to address systemic racism, bias, diversity, and inclusion in DOC. And the scope of that plan would address employment practices and supervision of persons under the custody of the commissioner and state facilities and in the community. Supervision of persons, DOC does that through their directives and policies. And that's where you need to do that really deep dive in terms of the equity issue and the systemic issues of racism is in their directives and policies. And that is, in, that is going to take a year or two to really work through that because a lot of those directives are really outdated, number one. And a lot of them, you do not look at them through the lens of racial equity. And that's what we're asking them to do. 
that's where your systems, that's where you change your systemic racism within DOC is through their directives and policies. What, what I would like to do is if possible um, is hear from Rosanna Davis um, and then Senator Ash has joined us. And thank you, Senator. All right, good morning. Good, see everyone. good morning. So um, I've been listening to this conversation with deep appreciation for all the thought that you all are putting into this and um, just wanted to very briefly address a few of the remarks that I've heard so far. The point that Senator White made that this work is already rolled into my, uh, my mandate as dictated in Act 9 of 2018, that is correct. Um, effectively us passing this law would be saying, Susanna, do your job, um, but it would be saying do it a little bit faster because this particular bill does put a, um, a deadline for the presentation of this plan. That deadline would be January 15th of 2021. So being that this is already part of my work for all the agencies, effectively what this bill does is tells me to prioritize DOC and do that one first so that it's ready in time for January. Uh, to Rep Shaw's point about our mention of my team, I, I just have to say there is no team, you're looking at it. So, um, which is exactly the reason that this plan doesn't already exist for this agency and for a number of other agencies, because it is slow work when it is one person doing the work. Um, so I do just want to acknowledge that yes, this is going to happen. Uh, this is part of my work and it's something that would be done whether or not this legislation were to um, come into play. This particular bill does put that time limit on it, so it, it accelerates the process for DOC as opposed to other agencies. Uh, but I, I hope that there's some comfort to you all in knowing that whether this bill moves or not, that work is going to happen. It's happening slower than we all would have liked just due to staffing limitations. Um, but it's absolutely a big focus, and I appreciate Senator White's point about looking at systems, not just the individuals in systems. Um, oftentimes, I think we, we tend to say, well, what are you going to do with inequity, but it's in the system, and the system is invisible and amorphous, so eh. and, and I think she's absolutely right. We are, we are those systems, and so being able to pinpoint um, where the inequities arise, whether it's due to the actions of individual actors, or due to the policies that we may have that are antiquated. I think Rep. Emmons mentioned that a lot of these policies and directives are, are quite old. And so modernizing is gonna require us to add that racial equity lens into our analyses. So all of that said, I suppose the real summary of, of my remarks is I'm, I'm comfortable with this bill. If it doesn't pass, that's okay too, because it's going to happen one way or another. This sort of just fast tracks DOC ahead of other agencies in this work. Um, I have enjoyed working with Heather. I've enjoyed working with the acting commissioner and will continue to do so um, moving forward. So thank you all for, for the time. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you for all you're doing. And by the way, we're hopeful that as a result of our appropriations work, you will have at least one other member of your team um, beside <laughs> yourself. So that you can actually well, call it a team, because um, you. you do need help. I I am I always you know scratch my head when I see all the duties we're giving to you, and then I say to myself, but she's only one person. Um, Senator Ash has joined us, and I appreciate that he's um, been embroiled in tough negotiations with the other body over the budget. Um, did you want a few a few remarks about your amendment, Senator Ash? Yeah, thank you. Uh, my amendment, I feel like, effectively uh, mirrors what Susana just said, which is that we established very clearly um, the position of executive director of racial equity within the executive branch to be the um, overseer and manager and coordinator of all efforts, uh, whether it be on data collection, training, uh, systems, uh, and obviously that requires working in tandem with all the other departments of state government, including HR. And it is important to me that if we, if we created that position with that intent, which partially was because we wanted expertise 
and not to have departments policing themselves, if you will, around these mm -hmm. kinds of policies because they will have their own inherent organizational biases about how they do business. We wanted someone else with a more dispassionate uh, view overseeing and managing all that, that if we truly wanna honor the intent of Act 9 when we passed it, then the executive director position must ultimately be either in a position of doing the work solely with her team or approving proposals that come from the departments themselves. So I felt like the uh, amendment I proposed is consistent with what the House uh, was trying to achieve, but does it in a way that doesn't actually undermine the spirit in which Act 9 was passed. And so, uh, I, and I also, I will also add, I took out one paragraph in the findings about human services element to some of the positions, not because that's not an important consideration. And in fact, the Urban Institute grant down at Southeast is focused uh, largely on such a concept, but it didn't really relate to the rest of the um, proposal that came over from the house. And so I felt like that might actually confuse matters. And so I did want to mention that I, the language I present takes that finding paragraph out about human services component of the job. Thank you for joining us on short notice. Are there any questions for Senator Ash or Ozana Davis about this proposal? Just like to suggest that Senator Ash get back to getting to the house and cleaning up that budget so we can get out of town tomorrow. Uh, you can count on me for trying to reduce the number of things going in the budget. <laughs> I have some things for you. Do you want to put them in? I want to get them to me quickly. Um, it's been very hard. You know, I'll tell you, this has been very hard because emails are flying. And so unlike a normal proposal with a series of, um, you know, discrete elements, but all on one page, we spent 50% of the time trying to figure out if we we're all looking at the same thing. And it's been hard. So our our three of the committee members just had the experience of doing a remote conference committee on S54. We, we share your pain. We sympathize with you. Um, I also will that's note a difficult experience. I'll also note that although this is my first conference committee on the budget, um, I, it's the legislative ability to uh, create uh, a sense of equal proportion to differences of opinion, um, you know, compared to normal years, there's actually so much agreement between House and Senate in the budget proposal, yeah. and yet uh, we're able to create more um, sense of difference. Yeah. Just whatever. But anyway, it's been a very rich experience. Great. Well, thank you. Um, Thanks. I appreciate right. it. Um, I'm just curious if, if <clears throat> obviously you don't have time to have a conference committee on S24. Um, is there a path forward for us to pass Senator Ash's amendment? Are there things that um, maybe highlighting the differences? Senator are, White, you're... are you ready for any kind of a? Uh, I, I would personally concur with a further proposal of concur uh, by adopting um, Senator Ash's amendment. Okay. I'm not sure that um, that was concur with further amendment. Well, Rebecca Wasserman. Is... Oh, here's here. Senator. I think there's a couple of problems with Senator Ash's amendment that need to be corrected if we're going to pass it. Um, one being the dates. Um, one date is December 20 something 2021, and another date is okay for it. So I think. Do you want to comment on that, Becky? Uh, sure. So Becky Wasserman, Legislative Council. Um, that was just. I was just uh, noting that when I was sent the proposal from Senator Ash, the. Yep. The draft said December 15th, 21, and then um, the final version uh, was January 15th, 21. So I, I took my best guess that the intent was um, the draft was December 15th, 2020, and final was January 15th, 21. Um, 
and that you weren't waiting a, a whole year for that. So right. I just wanted to confirm that that was the committee's intent. Um, could, could we see the draft online or someplace? Um, Peggy, we got it on email that. last night. We got an email last night. It's on our web. The House proposal amendment, if you look at our uh, judiciary yeah. website. I have that. Uh, Okay, well, it's it's uh, the it's draft 1.1 S24 RDW 2:22 p.m. yesterday. And this the other amendment, Senate Judiciary Amendment, is that what you're talking about? That's on the website as well. No, this one is. I just mentioned that. Yeah. Okay. I have have that one. I'm looking for Senator Ash's amendment. Well, that is Senator Ash's. It's it's Committee on Judiciary. To the Honorable Senate. Okay, I'll have to strike to all it. amendment. Uh, on your committee page, it's right underneath the House's um, right. strike all to S24. Right. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> I don't know if I have screen sharing ability, but I can bring it up if that would be helpful. Would you like it on screen? Uh, I think I'll have it here in a minute. Okay. Okay, I have it now. Thank you. Okay. So um, it contains findings. It contains, a, I would say, the biggest difference is that it puts the executive director of racial equity um, along with the charge to the department. May I comment on that? Yep. I, th I think it's absolutely crucial that the uh, director of racial equity be the the final, uh, I don't know if the word is arbiter or um, to approve any plans because I think Senator Ash was right when he said that <clears throat> um, the departments themselves, when they look at their, their uh, policies and procedures, are looking at them with um, non-objective eyes. And so I think that that it is up to the executive director to um, make sure that um, there's an objective <clears throat> view and adoption of any policies and changes. Okay. I, um, I don't know how this all gets done by tomorrow, mm -hmm. by the way. But I don't see how it does. I guess we could suspend the rules today and take it up. I don't know. If or we, we could write tomorrow, a letter. I, Dick. Yes, Bill. Um, couldn't you also tomorrow, if if people were in agreement on it, couldn't you do everything tomorrow? Bring it off the notice calendar. Uh, bring it up and take it through all stages of passage. Yeah, except that the House would have to concur because we're but, changing the House bill. But if we messaged immediately, I'm, when do you guys meet tomorrow? <clears throat> or you don't meet tomorrow? The House? Are you talking about yes. the House? We're meeting, the House meets at 10 tomorrow all day, and we're, we don't meet until okay. 3 this afternoon. One path forward might be if I could get my committee together quickly today to see the language because they have not seen this. I don't, this is a total rewrite. This is basically a strike all. Yeah. Bill. And if um, they may want to weigh in on this and have some suggestions. And I could get our committee together today. Well, we go on the floor at one o'clock. So we'd probably be voting on it if I can get it taken off. The, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, my committee may not agree to it, or they may have some suggested well, for but it. But here's the problem. All right. Um, if your committee doesn't agree to it, it dies probably, unless we, we agree with suggest, your version. Right, or we could suggest some other lang you know, language working in both our version and, and the strike all. Well, I think the main content, if I might change and Rosanna or, or Becky, 
is that we put this version puts the director of racial executive director of racial equity um, where the report goes to rather than the department doing its own. That's right. It it changes the sort of flow of um, the commissioner of corrections has to submit um, the plan for approval to the executive director of racial equity, and then um, she submits it to the legislature. And it also changes the findings um, sub substantially to sort of recognize the role of the executive director of racial equity that was created um, a few years ago. Um, Heather or Zana, do you have any comments on this? Good morning. Heather Good Simons morning. from Corrections for the record. I, I do have a few comments if they're welcome. Um, I appreciate this work. Yeah. Um, I certainly appreciate all the effort that's gone into the spirit of it. Um, I was comfortable with the original language. I still am. Um, we've taken a considerable amount of lead as we should from our community stakeholders, um, as well as Brown and black leaders. Um, it's not lost on us, nothing about us without us. And it's critical that this uh, this work be done with the people that it affects, that uh, with the communities that are um, leading us. I have some concerns around uh, timelines, but it certainly isn't going to get in the way with the with the pace of the work that we do or the commitment that we have. The original language mm -hmm. as well. I think um, to uh, to Chair Emmons point earlier with regards to where we are at and understanding that um, the opportunity we have to steer the quality of someone's sentence also includes um, our recognition of um, all of, you know, all of our constituents, including our, um, our constituents who we don't hear from, which are the children of incarcerated parents. And this is a commitment for, to the future. And um, the work in terms of uh, training and building equity plans within the department really is a statement around how we're working. We can't do one thing without the other. We cannot address the workforce and not the population that we serve. We can't serve the, uh, we can't do the work with the population we serve and the workforce without listening and partnership with the community members and the legislators. So to direct the point earlier, I appreciated them. This work will get done regardless. Um, we're already we're already doing it. Um, it comes with um, that. It comes with a, a lot of um, uh, how do I say it? There's a lot of language being uh, used to describe where we're at what we're doing and what the issue is. None of this will get done if we don't lean into some um, words like trust. Um, Director Davis had said at a press conference a few months ago that really, and I hope I get it right, but it was not lost on me, guard down and eyes open. So though um, I have deep appreciation for the com complexities around uh, the proposed bill, um, the weight of it, the accountability, uh, Senator White's concerns as well. Um, this work must move and it must work. Um, we must move in, in, in faith, in good faith. I was comfortable with the language before um, and I really would like the committee's members to hear that um, it will get done regardless. I hope that's Thank helpful. You. It is helpful. Thank you. Any questions for either Zana or Heather? Anybody on the committee? Thank you. <clears throat> Senator White. Thank you. I'm sorry to speak so much, but if, if timing here really is a problem and we run the risk of not doing anything because, and understanding from both Heather and Susanna that and Commissioner Baker that this is gonna go forward anyway, with or without this. If, if we can't 
uh, go forward with a piece of legislation, although um, having it in session law maybe gives it more oomph. In my committee, and I know that you probably don't want to hear this, but in my committee, when we um, when there are issues that we think are important, but that don't necessarily um, have to have legislative oomph behind them, we've been known on a number of occasions to, as a committee, <coughs> write a letter to the affected parties and tell them to do this. And it has had great impact. It, things have gotten done because um, you have a legislative committee writing a letter to the commissioner, to uh, the executive director of racial equity, to the um, administration and to other people saying, you have to do this and this is a priority, so get it done. And putting a lot of the language from whatever would have been the legislation in that letter. So I'm just suggesting that if we can't figure out a way to move forward with a piece of legislation that there are alternatives. I appreciate that, but I think it would, um, I think it's important that we keep the three-legged stool alive of what we did with uh, S-124, uh, S-119, or what we're doing with 124 and 119 and including, and then this one. I think it's an important message to the community if we can pass S24 and figure a path forward. Um, you know, if, uh, so anyway, that's my view. Senator uh, Nitka. So I just like to um, go back to some of the things that um, Commissioner Baker said that he feels he needs the force of this bill mm -hmm. to have a clear impact for everybody to respect. And I think that um, you don't get that with a letter. Yeah. And I think, I think you know, is there not a way forward to do the... Um... What's the matter? Walmart. <sighs> Can I, I need to take a two minute break. I'm very sorry. Um, my wife but, is... Um... So is, you know, isn't there a way to go forward with just um, in, in a much shorter version to put um, the Office of Racial Equity at the top to have this plan go through them before, you know, rather than re totally redoing the bill, to just put that in there somehow and make this plan that the House came forward with work. I mean, if there's a couple other statements that need to go in there, good. But it seems to me that, you know, Commissioner Baker has worked very hard on all of this stuff. I'd like to see him get what he needs. So... Any thoughts on that? Rebecca, do you see a way that something could be? Um, sure. So, uh, I mean, one, one suggestion would be in um, subsection C, and if it's helpful, I can bring it up, um, where the commissioner is developing a strategy and long-term plan um, to have that done either in coordination or consultation. Um, with the executive director or done together, shall develop um, together. So, so that's one area where they would be working together to, to do the, the strategy and long-term plan. Right, I, I think there is sort of another message that's in there that um, the Office of Racial Equity should approve the plan, mm -hmm. which is a little bit different than just working together. I mean, working together and having that office be the ones to approve it. And there are also some a couple of good things in the findings that speak to the um, importance of the Office of Racial Equity and maybe that maybe just some of that be put in and then it might be something that the House could accept more quickly than, than this whole change. Uh, Philip? Um, I, I just wanted to ask Representative Evans if I could, if, if we pass a version of this that's different than what the House developed, and uh, assuming I, I see Senator Ash's amendment as very, very similar to what you all did mm -hmm. with a few important changes. So if we go back to Jeanette's earlier um, sort of early motion that she could support sending Senator Ash's amendment back to you, um, if, if you could concur with that, um, that's obviously the easiest path. 
do you are there things there that you think would be deal breakers for you know as i said i'm not sure because this is so different than what the committee had worked on um i think is, what Sen senator nicka is I, saying it might be a path i think it would be i, I, I don't see it as that different really mm -hmm. um what, what strikes you as radically different from i think the approval process would have to be vetted with the committee uh, mm -hmm. that would be a different focus and i think we also have to look at employment practices because that's really the key in terms of how people are supervised and what the culture mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. um, and doc really needs a voice in that as well as the racial equity task force um, you know it's just a very different angle and approach yeah. and the committee needs to come up to speed with this. I can't mm -hmm. respond in terms of how, I think they be need some time to think it through. And as I said earlier, I could get the committee together today for them to take a look at this draft, but I know we're in a time. Well, frame. if we, uh, and if I might, Senator Sears, I, I, I feel as though we've, we've been put into a situation where we have one, it's, it's like you volleyed the ball to us. We have one swing of the racket left. Um, and so I think what Jeanette proposed strikes me as, as a, a very equitable compromise with what you gave us one swing at. Then we're going to adjourn this committee. And if you came back with something different tomorrow, we, we would realistically have to say we can't do it this session. So... Um, I, I don't know, it, it seems as though maybe you waited one step too long to get it to us for us to be able to have two swings and th that would allow your committee another version. Um, but I could do what Jeanette proposed um, easily enough. Meaning a letter? Is that what you're speaking no, about? No, I'm sorry, no. meaning, meaning just... Uh, concurring with further proposal of amendment and having Senator Ashes be the further proposal of amendment. I see, okay. Could I make a comment, Senator Sears? I, th muted, I think Dick. he's, okay. So, so I will, because I don't know what he said, yes or no. So um, I think that muted, the, um, the main difference, if one of the main differences here that need, that your committee needs to look at, Representative Evans, is the, the approval process. I think that our committee probably feels very strongly about that. The other differences in there, I don't see as being major. There are some tweaks, but um, I don't see them as being very different, except for that. Nick, you're on mute. God, I muted myself while Walmart was on the phone for my wife's glasses. Um, oh. <laughs> those are the emergencies we deal with um, mm -hmm. at home. Um, I think the best course of action is understanding that for us, the position of, of executive director race select equity needs to be the person who uh, the report goes to. Um, uh, I think that's critical in, in the so-called ASH amendment. Other parts of it were open. So perhaps we could, um, if they're not major changes, we could vote this out today, this morning, have it ready for the calendar for tomorrow, whenever it gets taken up. If your committee can meet this afternoon and you could send us changes that don't involve that seems to be the critical point. I'm trying to find it here because um, uh, I'm not sure who's. Um, th that is the critical point for us, I would say, is that the, uh, the draft plan goes to the executive director of racial equity for review and approval. That's the critical point. <clears throat> if there are other tweaks that you'd like to see, you could send them to us 
this afternoon. <clears throat> we could have them sent out to committee members. They can give a thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, uh, and if we need to meet, we could probably pull together a meeting tomorrow morning at some point. But yes, hopefully sir. we don't need to. So we would report on a bill tomorrow, um, presumably so-called ash version one point uh one point one dated two twenty two dated nine twenty three twenty two twenty two PM and if you have changes to that version, I believe that's the version. Except with Becky's change of date. Yeah, except with Becky's changes, yeah. So just be clear that would be the version. Right. So the most important piece of the Ash Amendment is at the top of page three, C, the plan, where yes. DOC would submit for approval to the executive director of the racial equity, a strategy and long-term plan to address systemic racism, bias, and diversity. That's the most important piece. Yeah, I would say so. But mm -hmm. I think we need to keep, if we're going to make this happen before the end of the session, need to make any changes simple for us to understand. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I don't mean that we're not smart, but... No, I, I know what you're saying. So uh, let me ask Representative That Shaw. didn't come out right, Senator, I uh, mean, Representative Emmett. No, it came. I understood. So Representative Shaw, do you think we could work through this with the committee today? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, Representative Emmons, if the, how the committee will feel about this. This is a piece of work and in, in to uh, Senator uh, Baruth uh, that we put considerable energy into. And uh, so I, I'm not sure how the committee is going to react, uh, to be honest with you, Alex. Well, I think I think it would be worth it to bring it before the committee. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I agree. And, um, and, and really work with them to understand that there's other issues at play here and other uh, viewpoints. I think that would be important to bring that back to our committee um, and see if we can find a path forward so we don't lose the whole piece. Because <clears throat> we do need to um, really help the commissioner change the culture within DOC. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to happen overnight and we need to take the first step to really do that. So I can get the, my committee. I mean, I think that's a good plan what Senator Sears put out. Um, if you can put out the language and then I can get the commit, uh, our committee to meet today and submit um, some language back. And then you've got it there for your calendar in the morning. Um, yeah, again, um, I, I would hate to see wholesale changes that make it difficult for us to agree to on the fly, because that's the way it's going to have to be. Um, right. I think we both uh, feel that way. Yeah. Uh, so if it's, um, is that amenable to the committee? to the Senate Judiciary Committee? There's really not much choice, so. Mm -hmm. not, at, not at this late date. Um, you know, and I, Representative Emmons did share with me the initial drafts. I did share them with Senator Ash, and he did. He and I talked about it, and he went over this and came up with this, and, but it didn't pass the House until yesterday, normally. You know, right. but right. was it was it yesterday or was it? Am I Tuesday right? wasn't it Tuesday? Tuesday. Well, Tuesday. today's Thursday. Thursday. Was it? it was Tuesday. Uh, yeah, it didn't get referred to us till yesterday. Um, yeah. And we're we're also dealing with S one nineteen as well. Um, so, um, I think that's the best we can do. Hopefully we can get a bill through. If we can't agree on it, then Senator White's original proposal would be working. Senator, oh, Senator White's proposal what? I just the want letter. 
the oh, letter. The letter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm just that that we could send under the auspices of perhaps the Joint Justice Oversight Committee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's but that's uh. I I'm hoping we can find a path to work for. I think we can, Senator yeah. uh, Representative Shaw. Thank you, Senator. I was wondering if you're going to make any changes to uh, the uh, the Ash Amendment before you send it over to us. Only if you want them. Pardon me. I'm, I'm not. I yeah. Becky's going to make the dates correct. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And there was one other, right? One other. Um, I think it it was just. The, I I just wanted the. I had a question about the. Um, it's the same language that was in the house version about um, the plan addressing, um, let me just bring it up, uh, systemic, where is it? Address systemic racism, bias, and diversity and inclusion. Um, as the editors were looking at it again, they just wanted to make sure that um, we weren't trying to say systemic racism bias and promote diversity and inclusion. Um, I don't know. I, I think I think the meaning is clear here, but I just I wanted to just run that by the committee um, to make sure that that was uh, not a change that they wanted to make. Just just curious, so we can figure out when the committee can meet. All right. Not have to so, meet Representative one. Shaw. Yes. Did you have other changes that you? Were because you asked Senator Sears if if we were going to make changes to the Ash Amendment. Did were there other issues in there that you saw? I can't I can't say so anything yet, Senator White, because uh, I really haven't had a chance to really sit down and run the Ash Amendment through my brain yet. But I will. Okay. Okay. <laughs> did Did Becky get her answer? Yeah, I don't know. I, can you explain that one again, please? Um, sure. So what, right now, what, where are you in the bill? Um, so, in the so do you want me? In, you want me to go through the Ash Amendment? Okay. So in the yeah. Ash Amendment, it is um, subsection C on page three. Um, so it says the Commissioner of Corrections shall submit for approval to the Executive Director of Racial Equity a strategy and long-term plan to address systemic racism, bias, and diversity and inclusion in the Department of Corrections. Yeah, the I editors think, think it should. What is uh, the they, they just their their question was whether um, sort of systemic was meant to be modifying anything other than racism, and perhaps they had a suggestion of clarifying to address systemic racism, bias, and promote diversity and inclusion. I, you know, I think. Um, Actually, I think that does help because that is what you're trying to do. Any objection? From anyone, sounds including fine. Including the representatives. No, it sounds fine. And then I think the, that uh, actually, the, I think th that helping and promoting diversity and inclusion is much better. Okay. And then the, the last point I wanted to make is that I I have to check with the Senate Secretary's office about um, whether just thinking about this since this was already passed by the Senate and it was referred back to the Senate. I think it has to be a further proposal of amendment that comes from either um, one senator or it could be from each senator individually on the committee. But um, I, I just want to double check that. If, if it's the case, should I have it from every senator on the committee? Yes, yes. unless there's a committee member who objects. I would report it, but. Um... Okay. So Becky, how many times have we amended this? So the bill came over to our house and it was not amended, I believe. It was not, no, it was, it was an, a Senate bill that passed out of the Senate, came to the house, your committee amended it and it passed out of the house. And um, then in the Senate, it was referred to Senate Judiciary, which is, I think that's the one thing that's, confusing me a little is because it was referred back to a different committee than originally had jurisdiction over it. So I just want to double check with the Senate Secretary's office um, if it is a further proposal of amendment or 
uh, committee amendment. I believe that you're correct that it is a uh, concur with further proposed okay. amendment. So I just have I believe to believe that's the, the way it would be. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think it's no different than um, because it's already passed the Senate in one manner and it's already passed the House in a different, and now we're concurring with further proposal amendment. So if we submit some changes that we all agreed to, then you would um, change- Well, we would just change it tomorrow morning, I guess. Right, in the calendar, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. Just wanna get uh, it But we, can we check to make sure with, with uh, Secretary Bloomer that we can do that? Um, because I don't wanna, uh, so that we can change it tomorrow morning if we need to. So you'll vote it out now? We'll vote it out right now. Okay. Then we will use that crazy process to send it to them. <clears throat> I believe it's a concur with further proposal amendment, but then okay. can we change our amendment on the fly tomorrow morning? Don't people often you have a substitute amendment for the one that's in the calendar? Well, yeah, I think you can. I'll connect with him to get the process for how that could happen. Okay. If I can ask Becky a question, I'm trying to get my sure. committee, trying to get my committee to meet either around 1230 or one o'clock. None of the members know about this yet. Uh, Becky, when would you have the language ready to present to us available? I, I could have it by that time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Is there any? Um, so I would, in, I believe, which Senate, somebody moved that we report as amended draft 1.1, 1 .1, which would now be 1.2 or 1. Point, or 2.1. I'll change it to 1.2. Okay. So draft 1.2 um, of S 124 that we concur. I'm going to that we concur with further proposal amendment and that is seen in draft 1.2 of S24. Is there any further discussion and any of the witnesses who are with us on Zoom are welcome to comment, including Representative Edmonds, Representative Shaw, Heather Simmons, or Zana Davis? Any committee thoughts? Okay. Peggy, would you please call the roll? I think this is our only vote. Senator White? Yes. Senator Baruth? Yes. Senator Benny? Yes. Senator Nicka? Yes. Senator Sears? Yes. So all of our names would go on it if it is a, if it's not a concur with further proposal amendment, then it was, the committee vote was five zero zero. All right. Again, thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, committee, Peggy, we can hang Peggy, on. If um, we could hang on as a committee, Peggy, after we bounce out of uh, being live on the air. Sure. Let me know when to end the live. Uh, I think we're adjourning the meeting now. Thank okay. you.